pie charts, the dreaded pie chart. Now, without getting into this way too early, pie charts are one of those things that analysts are divided on and for good reason. Now, we'll get into that much later. For now, you need to learn the basic and easiest way I've found to build pie charts. Shh, it's a secret. <laughs> All right, in this video, we're gonna cover pie charts. And I'm pretty excited to show this because pie charts are sometimes the bane of my existence because I see people with pie charts with like 50 slices in it. And that's kind of not what we use pie charts for. So it's just bad practice. Um, typically what we use pie charts for is when you just have a few slices. But actually, if you ask some people in the industry, we don't ever use pie charts. The only re the primary reason I use pie charts is because my management or the person I'm working with wants to see them. But as much as I can, I avoid them. And there's a few reasons why. So with pie charts, it's very difficult to compare values. So let's do an example. Okay, so here I am. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new sheet. Before we do, let's uh, rename these. So I'm going to call this continuous line. Let's do this one. I'm going to double click and let's go discrete line. Well, actually, it's not even a line anymore. It's kind of become a bar chart, but we can go in here and just switch it to line. Okay, so we can have our lines there. Okay, let's do a brand new sheet. So just clicking this button down here. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to build a pie chart quickly, and then I'll show you how to do it. And I just want to demonstrate something. So that's why I've got segment. I've got maybe not sales. So just ignore me for the moment. Okay, and I'm going to build a pie chart. Okay, now tell me, which value is higher, the red or the orange? Okay, and you're probably going to say it's orange, but how sure are you? Okay, and that is the point of pie charts, is that especially if you reorganize this, right? Maybe, I don't know if there's any other way to organize this, but um, it's not clear as to what the actual difference is. So you can say it's orange, but because of the way the human brain works, sometimes we can misconstrue this. And if I was to show this instead as a bar chart, if I go bar chart, it's far easier to be like, ah, it's corporate. See how much quicker it is? In the other one, you had to think about it. In here, in a bar chart, it's just obvious. And this kind of brings the topic of what we call pre-attentive, uh, what is that, pre-attentive cues, I think. And what it means is the human brain is designed and has evolved to read information, like graphical information, significantly faster right, than text, right, or, you know, certain types of visualization. In some of them, it's just obvious. And that's really what we're trying to play on when we use Tableau and create visualizations is instant transmission of clear information, no ambiguity. And one of the stories I like to say is, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of years ago, there was no tables. There was no spreadsheets. You didn't have cavemen going, oh, yeah, the profit loss. No, it didn't exist. But what we could do is we could recognize colors. We could recognize shapes. We can recognize movement. We can recognize orientation. You know, those are the things that the brain is just instant. So if you imagine you're looking inside your house and everything is still, right? Everything just looks normal. And then something moves. It catches your eye, right? You didn't, you didn't try, to, try to look at it. Your brain just goes, hey. It's something over there, right? Because our brain is designed to do that. All right. So there is just some theory of pie charts. But nonetheless, we will go through it because it does have some application. So let's clear this. And again, we're going to use this clear button. And that wipes everything. Okay. So I found over the years, the easiest way to make pie charts, and I still do it like this today, is to use the show me. Okay. So what is show me? Show me is this button up here. I will only show um, the pie chart component of this. I will not be using the rest of them. And the main reason is because as you're starting off, uh, it's good to know the basic building blocks of how you go about creating visualizations. But in the case of pie charts, it's actually more fidgety to build it from scratch, right? And I found no advantage in doing it that way for pie charts. So you don't have to make the mistakes I did. <clears throat> All right, so if I hover over any one of these, what you'll notice here at the bottom <clears throat> is that this keeps changing. And in fact, it gives you instructions of what you need. Okay, so if I hover over a pie chart, what does it tell me? It goes one or more dimensions. So what's a dimension? These things, right? And then one or two measures, right? So one or more, one or two. So really the minimum is one of each, okay? So let's go ahead and build that. So I'm gonna click this again to minimize it. 
So I'm going to do a really simple pie chart. Let's bring in the sales. Okay, so we have sales here. And then let's bring in, uh, let's do a different one. Let's do segment. So I'm going to double click that. So basically, I have now one dimension, one measure. Great. So if I go to show me, you can see these have now become active. If I don't have enough, they become inactive. Okay, so from here, I can simply click pie. It's that easy, right? It's the easiest pie chart you'll ever make. <clears throat> so there you have it. You have your pie chart. Now you can set this up. Go pie, put in a color, put in a slice, put in, you know, a value. But honestly, this, uh, I just don't see the point. It's so much easier to just use this, all right? So the first thing we're going to do when it comes to um, styling this, because this is not, you can't just give this. And I hate the um, pie charts that have no labels and just a color here. So again, what we're trying to do is when you're communicating information, it's not just creating a pie chart for the sake of a pie chart. You're trying to effectively communicate something important to someone else clearly. So if they had to go, okay, blue, blue is consumer, you just wasted their time. So what we want is to add the actual labels here. Generally, what we add is the label, the count, or not the count, the whatever the value is, so the sum of sales, and then the percentage of the pie, because that's really what pie charts are for, looking at the percentage distribution. The first thing we're going to do is switch this. I've been saying the first thing, but uh, what we're going to do here is switch it from standard to entire view. So what does this view do? Well, when we build visualizations, it takes up the least amount of space, right? In this case, it's only using up that space, right? If we go back to bar charts, you'll see, you know, it's only taking up this space. So what entire view does when we switch this, it just takes up the entire view. So more often than not, I, I always switch this to entire view. Fit width, fit height, don't worry about them for now. So let's go entire view. And you'll see the pie chart has now taken up the whole space. The other reason we do this is if I go back, if you start adding labels, it actually won't display correctly because Tableau has a feature that if labels overlap, it will only show one so that it's not messy. Whereas in Excel, if you have lots of points close together, it will just keep putting them on top of one another and it's super ugly. So let's go back and switch that to entire view. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to add some labels. So we're going to start with segment. So the way to add a label is if you grab segment again and drop it here into label, and I'll do it very slowly, and you'll notice it turns gray once you're in the right location. All right, so wait for it to turn gray and then drop segment. That's it. Uh, we're also going to drop the sales. So I'm going to click sales, drop it into label. Great. Um, what we want to do is actually convert this from sum of sales into percent of total. Now, what we have to do is do the percent before we add the numbers again. And the main reason is because uh, you can't add the same label twice. Right? It's a tableau thing. So we add the sum of sales. So this is my order every time. Label, sum of sales. Then I right-click the sum of sales with the letter T on it. And then I go to, let me just go here. I'm going to look for a quick table calculation. For some reason, it's not displaying correctly. Uh, so I'm just going to move this up for a second. There we go. And I'm going to go to quick table calculation. And I'm going to go percent of total. This is the only one we're going to be learning kind of at the beginning. Um, I think this one in running total maybe. But at quick table calculations, it's like a whole different bowl game. These things are just, they're magic, right? So whoever came up this with in Tableau, I love you. So percent of total converts into a percentage of the total. So let's go percent of total. And straight away, very easily, you have your percentages. So let me bring that back now. So consumer represents 50%. Corporate is 30% and then home office is about 20% in terms of sales. But I also want to add the actual value itself. So I can go to sales and then add that, ag uh, add that again. So if we go sales, and now I have the value. Pretty cool, right? Next is we're going to format this label a little bit because it's kind of a bit flat, right? It's very flat and it's, um, it's not clear which part's which. Like I have to go in and actually read it. I need it to be obvious. So what I can do is I can click on label like that, just a regular left click. And I'm going to press these three dots. And this and these three dots lets you customize that label. There you have it. So here you can see it has these kind of um, try, uh, the greater than, less than kind of symbols. Basically what it means is it's a dynamic field, which means 
not dynamic, but it's it's linked to the field itself. It's not just me typing in the word segment as just text, right? It's actually connected to something. Now, if you accidentally deleted a link, just like I have, it's like, oh no, how do I bring it back, right? You just click on insert, okay? And which one did we get rid of? Segment, and you just go segment, and it just brings it back. So we can actually style this. So I'm gonna make the segment one maybe 11. Let's make it bold. Okay, that's already starting to look good. I want sales above it, so I'm going to go highlight and I'm just going to click and drag it maybe there. I'll press enter. I want to put the percentage in brackets. Okay, and I want to make it red. So I'll highlight that and make it red. So we can actually preview this to see what it looks like just by clicking this button right here. So, so you can see how each one is slightly different so that it makes it a little bit easier for the eye to differentiate each uh, component. Again, makes it just a tiny little bit easier to read so people don't get confused. So if I'm done, I just press OK. And there you have it, a very pretty pie chart.